plain now. A large area of flat land with few trees. In geography, a plain is a flat, sweeping landmass that generally does not change much at elevation. In today's 26 podcast, listen to a story of the great steel beasts as they travel across the asphalt plains. Hey, 26 podcast listeners. This episode brought to you by Audible. Start your free 30-day trial. Here's what you get. You get a membership for free for 30 days, which includes one audiobook plus two Audible originals. After your trial, you get three titles each month, one audiobook plus two Audible originals. You can roll over any unused credits for up to five months. You have easy exchanges. Don't like your audiobook? No problem. Swap it out for free. And for 26 podcast listeners, they're running the limited time offer. You can get three months at the price of $6.95 per month. So go get this deal. Support those that support us. Go over to audibletrial.com slash 26. That's audibletrial.com slash 26. The steel beast scurry across the man-made asphalt plains, lest their masters berate them. Their only desire is to make it to their destination for a chance to rest, for they are driven mercilessly by uncaring masters, pushed to the very limits that would kill their careless masters. Their masters do not care if it is hot or cold, nor do they worry about distances that their beasts are forced to travel. Their masters sometimes were cruel individuals, loading the steel beasts with heavy burdens. They give them no rest in the cities, only a stop here or there for a drink of refined oil. Keep going, steel beast. You have more money to make me, laugh the masters. Hideous that they are, the masters push their beasts to continue. Through the rain, through the snow, through the heat and cold. Their masters sit in climate-controlled interiors, eating from paper bags, drinking through straws, continuously polluting their world without a care. A master turns up the volume in order to drown out the whining of her beast's heart. The temperature needle slowly creeps up. The beast soon will not be able to continue. It has grown old and will be cast aside. It will end up rusting along with other forgotten steel beasts. There is panic today amongst the herd on the asphalt plains. The great beast hunters are out in numbers with their cold, cruel, blue and red flashing eyes. They scan the herd looking to single out an unsuspecting beast. Be careful. There is safety in numbers, steel beasts. Stick together. Obey the law of the land. Do not be distracted by the distractions of the master. The master would have you swerve in his impatience to arrive home. A sudden slowdown, screeching of rubber, the sound of steel colliding. A poor beast has seen its last day. Its face smashed in, the glass from its eyes lying on the asphalt plains, its very life force spilling on the ground. A beast hunter arrives quickly, followed by the long red beast whose belly is full of water. Their master's only concern is to extinguish any flames that may emerge from the dying beast. The masters are extracted from the now dead beast. They are shaken but unharmed. 
they entered the boxy beast along with the medicine man. The boxy beast cries for the dead beast with its loud wails as it continues on the asphalt plains. The herd slows down as it nears the place of the beloved beast's death. Their eyes lowered, hearts full of dread. They know that they could be next. Their careless masters press the beast forward. It is, after all, just another day on the asphalt plains. The wind sighs, its lungs full of the beast exhales. It always feels dingy after a long day blown over the asphalt plains. The wind longs for the old days when the four-legged beasts roamed the land, carrying the masters to and fro. Those days were long gone. The four-legged beasts were considered inefficient and required too much care for the uncaring masters. The steel beasts soon came along and became the method of transportation for the masters. It did not matter that mother's veins were being bled dry daily to provide the steel beasts with nourishment. It did not matter that brother's sky was darkened with every exhale from the beasts. The wind surveyed its surroundings as it coughed. The steel beasts continued to increase in number daily. The masters were not long for this world. The wind continued on its way, passing a fawn. It was, after all, just another day on the asphalt plains. A fawn emerged from the forest, standing on one side of the asphalt plains. It stood there frightened. The memories of his fallen mother fresh in his head. Her body had been mangled by a steel beast while she tried to cross the plains. Her cries fell upon silent ears as the beast sped away, its master angry at the fawn's mother. The fawn's father made sure to warn him of the dangers of the asphalt plains and the steel beasts. Never look into their eyes, his father warned him, or they will lull you into paralysis. His warnings took root in the fawn's heart. He stayed away from the asphalt plains. Sadly, the fawn was alone now. His father, the mighty buck, no longer existed. A master with a lightning stick had ended his father's life the previous night. The fawn now had to cross the asphalt plains in order to escape from the oncoming masters. It has waited until dark, thinking it was safer to cross then. It sniffed the air and sensing no danger, took a step across. The sudden bright lights shining from the steel beast's eyes caught the fawn by surprise, paralyzing it. The wind closed its eyes as it heard the thud of the fawn coming into contact with the steel beast. It was, after all, 
just another day on the asphalt plains. Thank you for listening to another episode of 26 Podcast. I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you for all the kind emails I've been getting and the kind words I've received with people that I've met out and about. I just want to remind you that you can always email me at info at 26podcast.com if you have any comments or if you have any ideas for something you'd like to hear. I'm always open to comments. And again, thank you so much. And remember to visit us at 26podcast.com. Um, there you can always make a purchase from our shop. And that's kindly appreciated as well. And listen for things that are coming in the future. I think that you will like it. Goodbye. Find 26 Podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Pocket Cast, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a favorable rating. We're trying to grow this and can only do that with your help. you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm new. That's anchor.fm new to get started.